you must understand man my goodness my god lord help me say this the right way you must understand man man in all his dimensions you will be a loser in life if you do not understand men it's not an insult it's just a harsh description to force your mind to believe me you will be a loser in life if you do not understand how to work with men in this cosmos welcome to a moment where heaven touches the earth and the power of god is made manifest join us as apostle joshua sermon an anointed servant of the lord brings forth a message that will stir your spirit renew your mind and prepare your heart get ready for a journey of faith and revelation stay tuned there is a spiritual component to men there is a psychological component to men there is a sociological component to men there are things if you do not know about men you will be angry for the rest of your life there are things if you do not know about men you will keep recycling scenarios of pain and disappointment and heartbreaks you must know men your prosperity comes from God through the hands of men and if you don't know how to receive it every attack you will ever experience in your life will have to be routed through man don't ignore men are we together if you do not understand man as the zenith of God's creation please look at me you know I was meditating earlier on on what I was going to share and when I came to this point I started laughing by myself I took a deep breath and I said my God how many people for instance just an example if I ask you what business do you do you will answer this way I do oil and gas am I right on that or I have a shop I have a mall do you know that economically speaking you are right but from a standpoint of higher spiritual wisdom you are wrong there is nobody who does the business of things everything in life is the business of men oil only has its value because men place value on it your shop only has customers because men have chosen the day men cease to place value on what you do it becomes valueless once upon a time value from men was placed on a typewriter and whoever owned it or could use it was termed valuable but because men refused to place value they graduated their value to something else today typewriter looks like a monument don't just say i am valuable i hope men have a demand for the value you have the entire business of everything including salvation is the business of men do not ignore men you will fail woefully so are we together Spirit break out Break our walls down That's what God is doing already Deconstructing negative beliefs Bringing you to a point where some of you Especially those who were not here when I taught this God is showing you your life in a mirror And you are seeing very clearly If I continue this way Trouble is waiting for me It's not about prophesying negative this immediately will bring you to a point where you take the position of a student and you realize that I have to be serious. If I am not serious, what my father cried about, I'm about to cry about. What my mother cried about, I'm about to cry about. You must understand man. The Bible says, what is man that thou art mindful of? Business is run because of men, not just ideas. Ideas only have their value because men make them valuable. If men reject those ideas, they become obsolete. Nonsense will have meaning when men accord it value. Are we together? Wisdom can be called foolishness if men reject it. Everything revolves around the economy of men. If you know this, you will be wealthy. If you know this, you will be great. It was the business of men that brought Jesus to the earth. Restoring all things and restoring creation but ultimately restoring man. Men were so important that even in their degenerated state, God still chose to walk on them and bring them back. Don't ignore men.
you will pay a very dear price it is in the multitude of men the bible says that the king's honor lie can i give you the last one number six someone say thank god for koinonia for someone this is a bailout system for you mama cried and said lord i don't know the way out but help my son and god brought you here to show you the way out you can return back and say mama god has answered the prayer finally your son is not a weak person like gideon he has become a person of stature even by light six the sixth and final foundational knowledge you must have to live an excelling life is that you must know your adversary the devil i wish you didn't have to know satan it would have been a lighter burden but he's been here to stay for a long time it's important to know him because of the destructive tendencies that come with that spirit called satan the bible calls him the thief the bible calls him an adversary never calls him a friend the word satan means deceiver manipulator satan is not just the name of a spirit being it is a generic name given to a class of spirits they are called devils accusers deceivers they thwart the purposes of god over the lives of the saints please look at me satan will kill anything he can kill will steal anything he can steal will destroy anything he can destroy when you leave satan unattended to i assure you even if in ignorance he will not spare if satan did not spare a newborn baby and make sure that children died because a child of destiny was born you will be joking to believe there is no compassion the language mercy does not exist in the dark kingdom so from the days of john the baptist the kingdom suffered violent it would take the spiritually violent to take their portion in life and destiny by force your ministry will not rise just because you are kind say unto god how terrible art thou in all your works it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you apostle do you think satan is on my case yes sir by the integrity of scripture do you think he plans to kill me in a hurry now that you are even here but thanks be to god which causes us always to triumph always thanks be to god the confidence of the believer is upon that which is written but satan will kill anything he can kill like some of you allowed him and he's wrecking your business now but thank god you came tonight because every time light comes darkness must bow are we together are you ready to pray a prayer and then i get into the main course tonight pray a prayer in one minute open my eyes to see everyone pray please online pray something is about to happen to your life in a very defining way they go from strength to strength every one of them that appears before the lord even in zion i assure you tonight you will never be the same something is about to come from heaven in jesus mighty name we pray koinonia tonight i want to share with you a very powerful secret i came tonight to give you a gift it's a gift from heaven is a gift that has made men mighty is a gift that have made men strong everyone who is following online i want you to gather everyone you can find and tell them to sit around your phones your screens every man of god you can find every leader you can find every business person you can find every weary and struggling person you can find the spirit of god is about to speak you're about to hear something tonight that will 
really change your life. It has been an anchor in my life and I'm honored to be sharing it. Light is about to come. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, oh, oh rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, oh, oh. Fasten your seat belts. Let's get to work. Tonight, I'm teaching on the staying power. I want to show you how to access the grace that outlasts. The grace that makes men consistent is a very profound revelation you're about to hear. The staying power. The power that causes men to remain the grace that causes men to continue are you ready Joshua 14 from verse 6 Koinonia you are a blessed people honestly honestly I want you to believe me you are a blessed people then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal my teaching begins now and Caleb the son of of Jethuneth, the Kenizzite said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee. Next verse. Verse 7. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me to Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Uh huh. Verse 8. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. Talking about the other spies. Remember the 12 spies? So he was making reference to that. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. Verse 9. We're reading to 12. And Moses swear on that day. So Caleb is reminding Joshua and the people now. Saying, surely the land where on thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever because thou hast wholly followed the Lord thy God. Verse 10. Hallelujah. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive. And as he said, these forty and five years and ever since the Lord spake his word unto Moses while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness and now, lo, I am this day four score and 85 years i mean and four score and five years that's 85 years read 11 if you're a believer one to read as yet i am as strong this day as i was in the day that moses sent me as my strength was then even so is my strength now for war both to go out and to come in the staying men do not just last men do not just remain there is a grace that god gives men that can cause men to outlast outlast storms outlast seasons outlast adversities outlast any kind of thing whatsoever the bible says in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15, Hebrews 6 and verse 15, 
it says and after Abraham had patiently endured patiently endured he obtained the promise I want to show you tonight the mystery of consistency in anything you are doing it is the mystery that many of our fathers have known it is the mystery that many enviable leaders even in the secular have mastered in a way when you see a man remain when you see a man still vibrant full of vision full of power full of grace when you see that people's focus and determination does not go down there is a grace that is responsible for that are we together impact can be short-lived so says the story of samson impact can be short-lived so says the testament about the nazarenes that it is possible for a man to start strong in ministry in business in life and destiny and then for whatever reason factors you'll be learning tonight that it seems like it is a limitation in all men and with all men to gas out to plateau to be weary to be tired it is not unusual for men to be tired because of the vicissitudes that surround their journey to becoming their journey to destiny even Jesus on his journey to being the lamb that will be slain for us he became weary he became tired he became fatigued and the Bible did not hide his frustration he cried at Gethsemane in fact a man had to help him called Simon of Cyrene for him to die on the cross men can be weary visions can fade just like a man's eyes the Bible tells us a time came e Eli was once a vibrant priest but something happened in his life and Eli's eyes began to dim and it's so dim that Eli eventually on hearing that the ark of God had been captured and his sons had been dead the Bible says he fell broke his neck and died longevity of impact is based on a grace called the staying power there is a grace that when a man accesses you can remain in ministry you can remain in destiny that the storms of life can arise and fall men and systems can change governments can change this man called Daniel was a very mysterious man because he had such a grace that Daniel outlasted almost everyone the adverse the kings and all the adversities that were the men who were together fighting the purposes of God over his life the staying power was a grace that the nation of Israel had in Egypt that they survived 430 years and even though many things happened of that generation that came out only Joshua and Caleb got into the promised land but how many of you know that because of the grace that was upon them they were people who had been enslaved for many years but nothing failed to disperse them indefinitely there was always a way that they gathered back like the hen gathering her chicks the staying power is one of the mysterious provisions by the Spirit of God that can empower men and grace men to last that when the vicissitudes of life the challenges of life they rise and fall at the end of it when the dust is settled you are still standing the Bible says haven't done all to stand stand if you do not have this grace your company will not last your ministry will not last do you know that there are territories that swallow up the inhabitants there are companies that start in fact statistics will tell us I hope I'm still right on that that at least 80 to 90 percent of companies and corporations that start die within the first year it is not necessarily because they lack ideas or even the technical know-how and this is also true for ministries my goodness I have been part of by the privilege of God's grace being a strong encouragement for even men and women in the gospel I have seen the mighty cry I have seen the mighty join the weak to cry I have seen kings cry nobles cry leaders cry because life can do its thing to men 
and if you do not know how to stay I've seen couples cry I've seen parents cry I've seen children cry I've seen great people cry when it has to do with weariness it is an equalizer both the rich and poor experience it both the anointed and those who are otherwise experience it what you are learning tonight will equip you to last that decades after now when the storms of life and destiny shift and do their thing you will be standing as robust as a palm tree you believe that shout a loud amen, amen. as we conclude this powerful sermon remember the word of god is a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet embrace it leave it and let it guide you in every step may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with you all go forth in his power and live victoriously thank you for joining us today don't forget to subscribe to heavenly chant for more anointed messages and spiritual nourishment stay blessed and see you next time